from Astro Dwarf Adventures. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've seen any of my other videos and watched them, thank you very much. One of my videos is doing quite well. Uh, it's had over a thousand views, so thank you very much. You know who you are, and I've got over 50 subscribers now. So again, thanks very much. Really, really appreciate your support and me trying to understand, use, and develop my skills with the Dwarf Telescope um, and also um, my skills in astro photography. So um, I've had a few of my subscribers have commented and asked about um, your darks, your astro dark frames, what they do, how the dwarf uses them, how to do them in the dwarf. So from why my understanding of it, it is a two pronged approach. First, when you go to the astro dark mode on the dwarf um, app, which I'm going to show you here now, you're going to see that there's obviously the option to take astro darks. Now it's, it's an automated process, and basically what that does is it creates a library. It's a library of uh, three, I think it's three astro uh, dark frames, uh, all at um, 15 second exposure, but different gain levels. So 30 gain, 40 gain, 50 gain, 60 gain, 70 gain, etc. So then when you go and then do your astro imaging, uh, you will see that obviously you use whatever, say you're using 10 second exposures, but the astro dark library automatically choose the correct gain format for the uh, for the astro dark you've chosen. Uh, let's just say you're doing um, 10 second exposures with an 8 to gain. Uh, the Dwarf 2 software automatically go to the library and it'll take the, uh, the three dark exposures that we're taking that have the 8 to gain. It doesn't matter that they're a 15 second exposure, it just uses that one. Now this is really just, it doesn't help you in post imaging, it doesn't help you with, with the raw data. This is simply so that when you're looking at the screen and looking at your image, as you stack it live view, you're not getting those hot pixels. It's going to use the dark frames for the correct gain setting that you're using. It just chooses the same exposure settings as far as the gain is concerned, and that will give you the best dark images on the live view on your phone. Of course, that's just for your phone. That's just for what you see visually when you're looking at it. Uh, and you're looking at the stacked image, you know, the final stacked image that's in your library. So what I'm going to show you here is the uh, the, the auto dark frame. So the auto dark frame is just so the dwarf tree can build a library for when you're imaging, so you get the best live view on your screen. So we're going to switch to the different views now, the, the dwarf software view, so you can see that first on the automate process, and then we'll switch to how you actually see them, how they're represented when you look at them as a file on your computer. I'm out in the, the caravan at the moment, I thought I'd do it here. This weekend, hopefully, it's supposed to be a nice night on Saturday night. And I'm hoping to get out uh, and do some proper, as the name would suggest on the channel, Astro Dwarf Adventures, and actually have some adventures and get out with the telescope, get out with the caravan, get some really dark skies and get some, hopefully, some great images. So I really can use the telescope and get some great um, content for you guys and great images for myself. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm going to switch now to the um, the Dwarf software uh, so you can see how you automate and take the dark images. But I will show an example of um, the Andromeda Galaxy with dark frames or without dark frames. Okay, here is our Dwarf 2 uh, telescope. Um, I'm going to switch it on. There you are, that's it switching on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to the software, we're going to connect it, and then we're going to show you how we do these dark frames. Take our Dwarf 2 telescope, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the lens is pointing down, right down. Let's make sure that the lens is as dark as possible, there's little light getting in. Now obviously that wouldn't be enough, what it says you should do is put your Dwarf 2 telescope into its case and seal the case so obviously already it's going to be quite dark now actually first thing while i remember if you want to do this properly really what we need to do is disable the lights on the side um so we're not we're limiting any sort of um loose photons that could potentially hit the lens so again what we'll do now is quickly switch back to the app we're going to come to our settings and in camera settings you see we've got power light uh, indicator on and indicator light on so we're going to make sure they're off so although we want the, the dwarf 2 to be on we want its power light to be off the indicator light is off just now 
yep and i've managed to get that off now as well so that would mean that this is now ready to be put back into the case this is actually still powered on but you can see uh, both the power indicator led showing the status of the battery and the power status light is are now off so we're not going to get any light contamination uh when we put it into its case because as i said we're after this darkest possible image right so let me put this right down put it in its case now so i'm going to close this up so it's nice and dark and i'm actually going to also stick it in uh, the cupboard on the caravan here to make sure again as little light exposure as possible so i'm going to do that now Right, so that's in its case, it's lovely and dark, and I've put it into a dark cupboard. So let's now do an astro darks. This is us back in the software now. What we're going to be doing now is making sure uh, we take our dark frames. The camera's set up, as I said, ready to go. So we're going to go back now, and we're going to go back into the door too. As I said, it's connected, but you can see it's lovely and dark now. Uh, let me turn the screen. We've got a lovely dark screen here. We're going to flick to astro dark. And then we're just going to hit shoot and that's all we're going to do uh it was that from data library do you want to restart it yes that's from the last time i did it so let's say restart and that's it it is now running away and uh, it started taking the frames well it's starting now there we go and it takes rough it does take about 10 minutes because i did this before so that's it running through its dark frames now doing its astral darts so we'll let this run away just now then um and when it's complete I'll put the uh, SD card from the Dwarf 2 into the actual computer so I can let you see on the computer screen exactly how it builds up that dark frame library. So okay, we're going to let this run away now uh, and I'll see you when that's at 100%. myself today think how I changed how I really don't care if you are here or if you don't stay now I'm feeling those winter blues but I don't want to cry Cause all we ever do is laugh it off and I'm sick and I don't know why you remember that night we met I thought you looked so fine I guess we have to agree to disagree For this one last time Pretty weird that day when we did not exchange our hello Okay, you can see that's now 100% complete so what I'll do now is I'll take out the SD card and I will show you on the computer uh, the AstroTracks is actually just taken for you on the Dwarf 2 software. So let's do that now. There we go. Okay, now we've completed our astrodax, so let's get our Dwarf 2 telescope back out the back. Like so. Can you see we still got the power lights on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch this off. So that's it switching off. We'll make sure it's fully off. Now it's off. And what we can do is take out our SD card from the back. We'll put in a PC. There we go, there's our SD card. You should remember you also got this with the memory card, the adapter for your SD. I'm going to use this, you don't have to. I could connect this using um, a USB-C to the computer and do a direct, direct uh, cable transfer of the data. On this occasion, I'm going to use this little adapter. So I'm going to put the SD, the 64 gig SD, into the adapter, make sure it's the right way around. You know it goes right in because it goes flush it goes right in and it's nice and flush along the top and I'm going to stick this into the computer. Okay, let's go to our files. 
um, and if we go to the SD card, we see we've got our Astro Dark tier. <clears throat> uh, click on that, and there you see. So they're all 15 second exposures from gain 30 to gain 150. So, for example, just say you had done uh, gain 80 on 10 second exposure, you still the dwarf software would just use this one. And you see it's created the three dark frame fits files that it would access when you're using it visually on your dwarf 2. Uh, as I said, I'm going to include a uh, uh, copy of the Andromeda Galaxy taken stack with and without the dark frames to show you the difference and this is just on screen. Both these images were taken with a Dwarf 2 telescope, similar exposures uh, above with dark frames, below without dark frames and you can see all the hot pixels, the red, the blues and the greens, the very messy and noisy looking image. Look at the top, you've got the Andromeda Galaxy there and you see that's with the, with the dark frames it looks a lot better so use those dark frames.